In today's video, we're gonna react to some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. What if I told you, you are inside Area 51. This shows all the scariest unsolved mysteries and theories from around the world. Now, if you're easily scared, please just keep on scrolling right now. Trust me, this is your final warning. Part one, Area 51, but not how you think. Trust me. First of all, let's go right back. I'm sure you all know what Area 51 is, right? Well, no, it really does. Area 51 is a giant theory in itself. What is going on there? Why is it so heavily guarded? And of course, the other big theory is aliens. Do aliens exist? You know, what's going on there? Of course, Area 51 is extremely heavily guarded. You can't just get into it. In fact, if you go within a certain radius of the place, you just get absolutely creamed. Now, this guy right here is Bob Lazar. You may have heard of him. Now, Lazar claims that back in the 80s, he was working at Area 51 to reverse engineer alien spacecraft. Yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty crazy in itself. This is one of his drawings of it. Mm-hmm. This where it gets crazy again, because... This is Area 51, right? And this right here, that's Area 51, right? But it's not. Bob said all the work doesn't actually happen at Area 51. It's kind of like a distraction. Whereas this place, Area S4, is where everything happens. Now, if you go out and zoom into this place, you can't drop a pin anywhere, nowhere. Now, it's clear this looks like some kind of either mining area or, like, bombs have gone off. And in this area, there is, you know, quite a lot of stuff going on that we don't actually know what it is. But in one of the mountains around here, apparently there's a road that just goes up into the mountain, it ends, there's like a tunnel, and it doesn't go anywhere else. Apparently, nothing goes on in Area 51, it's in Area S4, just a few miles away, and that's where everything actually happens. But what's the second theory? Because this <laughs> is interesting. I'm not saying I believe this by any means, this is literally just theories for entertainment purposes only. So this, don't say I believe it because I'm not saying I do. Theory quite a lot of people are starting to believe now is that Area 51, nothing actually goes on there. We are actually inside Area 51 right now. And the reason it's so heavily guarded and we can't go there is because that's actually the escape to basically the real world. So yeah, have a think about that. We're literally at the top of this list and it's going to get pretty wild. So make sure you hit that follow button. See you in the next one. I think it's a really fun theory to think that we are actually inside Area 51. And if you get into the so-called Area 51, that's actually the escape to the real world, I guess. You would think that if it was an actual place that had our freedom, like that's where the real world was, they would not just allow people to see it on like Google Maps or something like that. It would be very well hidden, I would assume. Someone needs to explain this to me right now because I don't know what fucking chemicals are in these cats. It's a parasite. So there's a parasite that comes from cat shit, cat poop, right? It's called Toxoplasma gondii. You get infected with it. It's called toxinal plasmosis. Here's the crazy part. That parasite, that infection, it makes you give irrational infection to the cat. It makes you stop fearing the cat. It makes you constantly want to cater to the cat, right? The reason why cats have this in the wild, they catch their prey with it, right? So their prey, when they get infected by this parasite, they lose their natural fear of cats, so they're easier to hunt. So a mouse infected with this will come and try to go squeak, squeak, Play up on the cat and the cat goes, hum, nice liver cat. You know what I mean? Eats it. You're infected. You're a victim. What's even crazier is if you're a pregnant woman, you're not even allowed to change cat litter because that parasite can infect your baby. Now, a baby, you know, is developing in the womb, chilling, gets infected. A major one being that it can impede the development of a properly functioning brain in that baby. Meow. I have heard about this a long time ago, and I had a hard time believing this to be true. But according to medical professionals, it is an actual thing. You have to be very careful around cat feces, especially as a pregnant woman. When you see like ancient Egypt hieroglyphs and there was a lot of cats back then, it makes me wonder if they were actually worshipping cats because of this toxoplasmosis. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any cats and if you feel like maybe you're under this parasite's control. So this is the evolution of Neuralink, if you will. Introducing BrainBridge, the world's first revolutionary concept for a head transplant machine, which uses state-of-the-art robotics and artificial so intelligence to the body? complete yep. yeah. They're trying to pioneer this research and this procedure. They can take the consciousness of an elderly person. The brain can stay active with a young body for another couple hundred years. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Joe Biden's team's like, how long will this take? <laughs> <laughs> How long do we got? Hypothetically. Hypothetically speaking. <laughs> How soon can we get this running? Dude, some old dude's going to get my body. Like, I'm finally young again. Like, why do I have to pee so much? <laughs> I have to poop every two oh hours. Oh, my gosh. I don't think it'll get to human trials, but I'm terrified of, like, the animals they're going to mesh together. Yeah. The like liger. Some... 
The Dude, Liger finally. Is our walks among us. I, isn't that a real thing, though? It is a real yeah, thing. Yeah, they right. actually... No. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> I mean, I definitely see the benefits in something like this, because if someone has an unabled body, they could just have a transplant to someone that's donated their body, and it could change their life forever. But I definitely also can see very wealthy people utilizing this more than anyone just so that they can outlive everyone. It's probably going to be an extremely expensive procedure. But I personally do not see anything wrong with this, but man, I bet the trials are gonna be crazy. But I could see this being a huge benefit for some people that, like I said, have disabled bodies. This would be an amazing opportunity for them. Let me know what you guys think about this. What is this that just appeared by the sun? I continually see objects flying from this trajectory towards the sun, and now these larger objects appearing to fly behind the sun are now normal for me to see. But this is a first. I have never seen anything like this, and I don't have an explanation. These three or four objects have all happened within the last 72 hours, and we now know that the last 72 hours there has been intense activity coming from the sun. And we can argue that maybe they are meteors or comets or asteroids, and that might be true. But there's been no official explanation for these. These things that I see time and time again, from the same position in the sky. But this, this is brand new. I think it's naive to pass it off as something natural. But then again, who am I? I really wish that I had a telescope that was capable of getting very close shots of the sun or other planets for that matter. If I seen something shoot straight up or going out of a distance and it doesn't look like a, a standard like meteor, I'm never going to stop looking because I'm always now going to be watching space just to see if I see anything moving around up there. But this would be really cool to have because there are some really hard to explain objects because they're so far away. You just don't know what they are. People say that it could be meteors, but we really don't know. And if that's a meteor and the sun is supposedly so many millions of miles away, that meteor has to be massive. I'm on a walk. I've been seeing all these signs. I didn't look at the picture so good, but I just realized this motherfucker looks like my dog. Sit. Hey, come here. Rufus. I just bought him two weeks ago and his name is not Cut. Rufus, Cut. I'm tripping out because I bought this dog like two weeks ago off a of family. So he's not lost. His name's not Cut. His name's Rufus. They said they couldn't keep him. Blah, 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 because they're moving. But why does this dog look just like him? I don't know if I'm tripping, but... Nah, it looks just like him. Look at this. I'm mad now because I literally just took like 10 signs down. Now people probably think I stole this dog because this lady's like, oh, you found the dog? I was like, no, this is my dog. And she just ran inside. She didn't run inside, but she went inside quickly. Like, for what? He's not lost. I don't think it, they look alike. Sit. I don't know, it kind of kind of doesn't look that much like him now that I look at it. I'm sorry to tell that guy, but I'm pretty certain that that is that lost dog and he's probably going to have to return it because there's a, no doubt that that is the same dog. They look exactly the same. And plus it reacted to its name Cut. Like he was saying Rufus and then when he would say Cut, the dog would respond. So I, I really feel like if this is a real video and it's not a skit, that this person got got. <laughs> Were space hurricanes on your 2024 bingo card? First described in 2021, space hurricanes are cyclone-shaped auroras that swirl for hours near Earth's north magnetic pole and rain down not water, but electrons in the upper atmosphere. Researchers are now saying that parallel space hurricanes swirl near the south magnetic pole as well. The ionosphere is an upper layer of the atmosphere charged by solar radiation that contains these storms of swirling plasma. These storms can reach speeds of 4,700 miles per hour, and in 2020, researchers observed one that was approximately 620 miles wide. 
roughly centered over the North Magnetic Pole. Are they sure these aren't like portals or something to other dimensions? Satellite data, or satellite, whichever one you prefer, collected from 2005 to 2016, identified 259 space hurricane events in the Southern Hemisphere's ionosphere. That's about 23 events per year on average, which tend to happen more often in the summer months. Scientists think that space hurricanes are caused by changes in Earth's magnetic field due to solar wind. This flow of charged particles from the sun disrupts the magnetic field lines. When these lines reconnect, they stir up ionized gas in the ionosphere, creating upward flows of electric current. I already have a hard time dealing with standard hurricanes. I really do not need space hurricanes getting involved into the mix. The following video is from a home security footage, and it truly has me stumped. I have no answers for you. The video starts off, as you can see, with a man walking up into a por on the porch and standing in front of the front door. But this is where it takes a turn for the weird. Something what seems to be going supersonic speed whips around, hits the back of his legs, causing him to basically knock over and be knocked out onto the ground. But the question remains, what hit him? And now I've slowed the video down and you still can't tell. It's almost like an orb going extremely fast. And it was caught on the security camera. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think could possibly have happened here. I really do not know what that could have been. Now, a part of me wants to say that the, the orb or the object that went into the camera's view was actually just a moth or some kind of bug, and it was much closer to the camera, and it just appeared as if it hit that person and that person fell down to the ground. That is the only thing that I think it could have been. Other than that, I have absolutely no clue. So if any of you guys have any idea what that was, leave a comment down below. Guys, we are in a simulation and I just got proof. And I don't usually do uh, videos like this, but I literally just got proof. This just, I can't even talk. This just happened right now and I'm going to show you proof. <sighs> My heart is beating a million miles a minute. Okay, so I just finished breakfast, right? Mind you, I'm sitting here by myself and um, I fell back to sleep after I woke up to go to my morning workout, right? And as I'm eating breakfast, I'm thinking to myself, dude, why was I so exhausted? I went to bed at a at, at a nor at a decent time for me not to be that exhausted. Why did I fall back asleep? So, you know, it's late, late, late morning now. Like I wanted to get up, you know, and be up by 5 36 o'clock. Then I, I it dawned on me, oh, that's right. We just added a medication to my um, regimen to help with anxiety. That it's like a bedtime thing. It's a very low dose. And I remember that I took it around. 9 p.m., 7 p. I'm uh, sorry, around 9, 10 p.m. And I thought to myself, that might be what it is, right? That I'm taking it too late, so it's like it's making me groggy or it's making me tired, even though it's not. So Anyways, that's the point. So I go, let me put a reminder for earlier in the evening to take it, okay? Guys, I'm gonna show you proof of this. So I'm sitting here eating breakfast, watching videos, right? And I go, hey, you know her name? I go set a daily alarm for 7 p.m. That's all I say, right? She comes back and says to me, and I'm going to show you the proof. She says, a 7 p.m. alarm for your anxiety pill has been set. I didn't say what the alarm was for. 
I didn't even say it out loud. I, this was all a internal dialogue that I was having. No one is here. I'm going to freaking show you, the, like, because the thing came up at the top. Look. So like I said, I was watching videos. So I was watching this lady's video about, you know, the gossip, whatever. And look at what it says. Look at that. Now, look at how and, and one can say, oh, you, you, you Photoshop that. Watch this. So this photo, for some reason, I had to crop it because when, it, when it's big, you can't see the top. But watch this. Look at the Siri bubble right here. Because she, she had just spoke it to me. I have never been one to really like feed into those type of things. But if we, if that isn't proof that we're in a simulation, if that isn't proof that these things are reading our minds, that's just fucking, that just blew my mind. I don't know. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Everybody has been asking me hey, Siri. about this crazy. Set a daily alarm for 7 p.m. I'm not gonna lie. My phone is also very good at guessing the things that I'm thinking and things that I want to say. But to me, this video almost had me until I heard the Siri respond because the, the device said, okay, I set your anxiety pill PM alarm. So that sounds like she already had an alarm created for 7 PM for it to even activate that it probably was just an alarm that she already had set in the past and she just didn't realize. And when she said that it triggered to reactivate that alarm and it just so happened to reactivate it. That's personally my guess. Leave a comment on what you think. Do you think that maybe this device is actually reading our internal monologue, which I don't doubt because there are sometimes I'll be thinking about very, very specific objects that I, I kind of need in my life and YouTube will play it as an advertisement. It's just like, are you listening to my thoughts? The exact details of what led up to what's going on in this video right here makes it way more terrifying. We ended up watching this video on my live and we all kind of came to the same conclusion that at first it kind of looks like pretty sus like her leg is just being lifted like that however the longer and longer that it's being lifted it's obviously being bent at an unnatural angle to the extent to where even if she was doing it by herself she couldn't do it by herself but her hauntings didn't start off that way this that was just the crescendo of a lot of weird and bizarre things that had been happening to this woman and her specifically keep that in mind over the course of a few weeks now what makes these incidents so terrifying is that they didn't start happening until her and her husband had gone to a halloween party at a supposed haunted prison with that in mind, I, it brings a whole new light to what's going on in this video here. I mean, can you imagine being followed home by a potential criminal from a prison? Like, the very idea is just, it's horrifying in every way you can think of. Now, the last I heard, she was able to get this taken care of and was able to get it out of her home, but I can't, I'm not entirely sure about that, but if you guys are, please pass it along and let me know. That would be pretty terrifying. You're just laying in bed. Next thing you know, your foot's just curling up and touching you in the back of your head. The thought of having a prisoner as a ghost is kind of scary. Like, you don't know what that prisoner was up to. They were obviously probably a bad person, and now they're latched onto you. That would be very creepy. The only thing that I just find a little odd i don't have security cameras just all in my house i do have security cameras outside of my house it just surprises me that there's so many people that have security cameras 
all over the house, you know? I'm a little sketched out that someone would be able to hack into my security system and actually view what's going on in my house when I don't authorize it. I'm not saying that this is fake because of that reason. I just find it a little suspicious sometimes. Back now with a new warning this morning about what is being called the Teflon flu. There's a rise of people that are getting sick in connection with the use of nonstick pans. Poison control centers are reporting an uptick in illness. Last year alone, they had more than 250 cases. It's the highest numbers since the year 2000. Experts say at high temperatures, the Teflon pans are releasing chemicals known as forever chemicals, and that's what seems to be causing illness. Check your cookware. Uh, if it's got a lot of wear and tear on it, if you've had it for longer than three and five years, specifically these nonstick cookware, then you probably should replace them. And when you're using them, you want to make sure you turn on that ventilation. And then, of course, you want to avoid burning these pans. You want to avoid temperatures. I'd be cautious above 400, but technically 500 is when you start to see those chemicals. And then don't preheat an empty pan and make sure you don't use that broiling setting on these pans, and that can increase your risk. So as a kid, my parents were really big into bird collecting, like they loved parrots. And one of the things that the vet was telling my mother was that Teflon was not something you need to cook in with the house because the chemicals that it releases is very toxic to birds. So knowing that information, I always kind of stayed away from Teflon in general, even though I don't have birds. I can only imagine if it's bad for an animal, it's got to be bad for a person as well in the long run. I personally like to stick to my cast iron pans. I have a whole set of them that I've used for a long time and everything seems to be fine with them. What do you guys use to cook with? Do you believe in using Teflon? Do you use cast iron? What, what do you use exactly? Leave a comment letting me know because I'm always interested in new ways to cook food that's more safe, more healthy, that would possibly leave less metals getting into my food. That was a pretty real looking video. The reactions of everyone aren't really quite there. I would think that if there was something going on in the sky like that and someone was pointing it out, a lot of people would be reacting to it a little bit more. Maybe it was just so sudden that no one had a chance to react to it. But the thing that really kind of throws it off for me is the sound effect that you hear when it leaves. If you listen very closely, you can hear a slight zip away of the UFO or whatever you want to call it flying away. And that kind of makes me believe it to be fake, but it could also be real and it's just faintly being picked up on the phone or on the recording device that they're using. It just sounds way too clean for it to be real, especially at that distance. Let me know what you guys think about this one, because if that was a real video, that was probably one of the clearest videos that we've seen this year. The following news clip has gone viral with people commenting, stating that this is confirmation LeBron James is a shape-shifting reptilian. Now, I had to look up this video myself, not look at, you know, other social media posts. So I honestly thought that it was some sort of filter or somebody messed with the video. The following footage is the actual clip from NBC News when they were interviewing LeBron James on July 26, 2024, in regards to the 2024 Olympics. It is not somebody intentionally doing the glitch. But it oddly looks like his eyes change. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that this can't be like some sort of computer or camera glitch. It, it very m well could be. But now I see why people are stating that he is a shapeshifter. And this is proof. Because it does look crazy. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. You know, I'm sure it is some kind of TV effect that's happening that's kind of glitching the system, but I have seen this kind of stuff happen a lot throughout my life, watching TV as a kid, as an adult. I see this happen quite a bit. As a kid, when I'd see this happen, and I'd ask like my grandma or my parents, why does it do that? They're like, oh, it's just a glitch in the TV and the satellite. But in my mind, because I was always really big into fantasy and things like that, I always was wondering, what if that's just like a goblin or some kind of fantasy creature that's just disguised in some kind of glimmer and TV kind of just throws that illusion off from time to time and their real self, it gets shown through television? That's just something that's always ran in my mind as a child and it still kind of does to this day. Speaking of positive vibes, have you ever heard the Aztec death whistle? <laughs> <laughs> just listen to this. Death whistle. Sounds good. <laughs> I don't like 
like that at all. Oh my goodness! Ah, stop! Oh my stop, god! Stop, stop it! Okay. Jeez. So this thing they would actually use whenever there would be like different tribes of people like in conflict with each other when they knew where the other one was camped out. They would take these whistles <gasps> and they would go on the hill and blow into them because it sounds like someone screaming in pain. So it was war games. They would blow these whistles. That, that really scared. That, that third one was rough. <laughs> that oh was my bad. Goodness. But imagine like a thousand people like surrounding your house and just echoing those things down. I would just cry. Surrender, like I'm done. That would be very alarming to be able to hear something like that actually not knowing what it was at the time. That had to be extremely frightening. And it's really cool that today we actually have the ability to reconstruct death whistles. And I kinda wanna get me one. I live kinda in the middle of nowhere in a way and I think that would be really awesome to just blow the death whistle super late at night just echoing through the lands. Have you ever heard of the scientist Dr. Daniel Nims? Probably not. Because soon after Dr. Nims published his research and his invention on the internet, he vanished. Daniel Nims was a scientist with a background in quantum physics and energy research. He created a device called Energy Vision. It was essentially a camera to take pictures of interdimensional beings. And that's what these photos are behind me. Nims believed that much like dark matter, that these beings existed in a dimension that was different than ours, but coexisted with us. That they were a different energy or a different vibration than humans. A lot of the information about his work has been scrubbed from the internet as well. But all of these photos behind me were taken from the camera that he invented. And he fully believed that these were beings that were coexisting with us just in a different realm. Kind of like string theory. While some people believe that it's just pareidolia when you're looking at these pictures, others believe that you can actually see interdimensional beings in these photos. Some even say that you see angels and demons, or even mythical creatures. What do y'all think about this? Because some of these things are really creepy. Don't forget to like and follow for more paranormal content. It's unfortunate that this individual went missing. But these pictures are really neat. If these are actually the pictures that were taken with that device, they're really cool and extremely interesting. I do not necessarily believe that to be some kind of multidimensional being, mainly because they're almost all front-facing photos. They're not just random photos of things just walking by. Like, they're actually, like, almost face-on photos, and that's just a little too perfect for it to be some kind of other interdimensional being in my mind. I, I, well, I don't see why they would just stand still to have their photo taken. So it could be a big case of pareidolia on that one. And honestly, I used to do something kind of similar. Now, I never created a device to take pictures with. I would take my phone, and I would swing it around, and I would take a picture, and whatever I seen in the blur of the photo, sometimes you would see faces or you would see figures standing in the photo of the blur. And I used to say that those were ghosts that I was capturing on camera. And I just kind of wonder if maybe this is the same thing, you know? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I'm really sorry about the length of the video. I know my videos have been really short. I do want to say happy 200th episode. This is my 200th video that I've uploaded on this channel doing these reactions. And I got to say, time has flown. I can't believe it's already at 200 episodes. I want to say thank you guys so much for being a part of this channel to help me get this far, to to keep me motivated and keep me going because it's a blast. And also with that being said, for the 200th episode, being that you've made it this far, if you've made it this far into the video, tonight I would like to do a live stream. I'm not 100% sure what time yet. If you guys, if any of you guys are watching this that are curious about the live stream, let me know in the comments what time you would like to see the live stream. It would have to be after 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Unfortunately, that is later in the day, but I can't just do it right now. I am currently at work. As you're watching this video, I'm actually working right now. But when I get home from work and I get my shower and some food in, I'll definitely sit down and do a live stream. So let me know what time sounds more favorable for you. Any time basically after 5 p.m. is fine for me. And if I don't really get a solid answer, I'll probably just start the stream at 6.30 or 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to stop by, be on the lookout for the live stream, say hi. I'd really appreciate the company. And as always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.